Welcome to our webinar. So excited to have you here. Um, we are going to be getting started right now. So excited to see everyone rolling in to our chat room. Just a couple of super quick um, reminders here. If you're new to Zoom and how this works, all of your audio should be coming right from your device, whether it's your computer or your phone. And all your controls should be right below the screen that you're seeing. So if you want to add a, some questions, I would absolutely love to see things popping into our Q&A button. And there's a little button with three dots that says more. And that is also where you'll find our chat. So you can chat in questions to me there. And I'm here with you live for the next 60 minutes to help get you started on your thinking for 2019. So as you roll in and get settled in, I would love to see you in our chat. I'd love to hear from you as we go. And I will be staying at the end to answer any questions that you might have. So feel free to just pop them in as we go. I've got the chat box open. I've got the Q&A screen open. I'm really excited to be sharing this content with you today. So welcome to our webinar called Start Strong, Moving Beyond Just Sales Goals in 2019. And I love this topic. Goals are always this um, exciting place because you can do so much with them. And there's so many different ways to look at goals that I wanted to focus on something maybe a little bit outside of the box. And for those of you who know me really well, um, you'll hear some of the things that are, are big themes for me. And for those of you who are brand new to working with me, these are gonna be some exciting, hopefully, um, eye-opening ideas for you as we get going today. So for, just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Madeline McCray. I'm your host today for our webinar. And we're gonna be spending the next 60 minutes together today and you are gonna be leaving this webinar feeling like, wow, best way I could have invested these 60 minutes. And I have worked with thousands of small businesses just like you who really want to grow and improve their businesses. And today's content is really the fruit of all of that work with them, of spending hours and hours working hand in hand with businesses to help them get to what they actually want, where it is that they want to go. And I know that goal setting can be really intimidating. A lot of us take a couple of different approaches. We just wing it or we do nothing or we set these crazy lofty goals that in the end of the day really only serve to become this stick that we beat ourselves with because we didn't get everything that we expected to go where we expected to go. So today I want to make sure that we are taking a deep breath and taking the time to create goals that really get us to where we wanna go because there's nothing more frustrating than setting a goal and watching yourself fall short. That really helps you go down the short path of burnout and of feeling like a failure. And that's definitely the last thing that we need as small business owners, right? There's enough things out there that make us feel stressed and like we're not living up to our own potential. Let's not be a cause of that for ourselves. So I love to focus on growth. I love to help business owners who are ready to accelerate, figure out where their pa fastest path towards acceleration really is. But in order to do that, there are a couple of fundamentals that you need to have in place. And that's what we're going to be diving into today. We're going to be looking at exactly what pieces you need to plan for in your business in order to be really successful in the upcoming year in order to leverage the excitement that's happening in our marketplace. I mean, 2018 has been an awesome year for home improvement space, um, has been an awesome year for so many small businesses. A lot of people say, hey, if only I could get more people to work for me, I could take on more projects. There's a lot of opportunity out there and we want you to be set up for success to be able to leverage and to use those opportunities really well. So um, we're also gonna be looking at how to get you and your team really on board with making your goals a reality. That comes back to what we just talked about, what I just touched on, where sometimes we set up these lofty goals and then we just watch ourselves fall short. And it's such a defeating feeling to take on board. So we, don't, we really don't wanna to ascribe to that. We wanna set goals that we feel confident that we can accomplish, but that are not so low and so easy that we're just dialing it in, right? If we're just dialing it in, what's the point? So we wanna make sure that our goals are a good balance of stretching and, and aspiring and also rooted in reality. So we're gonna go over that um, pretty in depth this afternoon. And then last but certainly not least, we're gonna look at the one critical element that you have to have in place so that you make good goals in 2019. And just so that I know he, who's here on the, um, on the line with me, I can see your name, some of you. So let me pop open my attendees panel here. So I see some of you, so welcome to those of you um, Hey, Tim, I didn't expect to see you here live. Nice to see you, Kim, Kate, 
Karen, Laura, Terry, so great to see you all here. Carrie, um, feel free to pop into the chat and share with me if you already have your 2019 goals dialed in or if you are here because you want to set those up. Because it really makes a difference in terms of how we can move forward together. So as we have a small group on the line here live with us, we can, I can dial this in for you really concretely. So pop into the chat box. It's under the three little dots that say more. Um, you can pop in the chat and let me know if you already have your goals dialed in for 2019. And this is just going to help you sharpen them up. Or if you haven't set them yet, if you pop that in, um, Hey, Deco, you're going to be doing setting goals. Awesome. Thank you for that. So let me know because that will help me customize this content for you on the spot. So the one thing, the one critical element to get in place, Kate sharpening up, Kim not set them yet. So awesome. Good. We have a good, good diversity of people, people who haven't set them yet and people who have. So where we're going to start is with our last element here. The one critical element you need to get in place so you can make really good goals for 2019. And remember that as a small business owner, when we set goals, the person who most needs to believe in our goals is whom? It's ourselves, right? We need to believe that we can accomplish what we're setting out to do. And if we start with what other people are expecting of us, what we should do. If the word should is really playing into your language when you're talking to yourself, when you're talking to your people about your goal setting and where you want to move and it's external, it's very hard to sustain when times get tough, right? Because although 2018 has been an awesome year and 2019 is looking bright, it could happen that things go off the rails, whether for you personally or as a business or in the economy. So you need to be so dedicated to your goals that nothing's going to shake you off center. And the one element that you need to have in place in order for that to be true for you is to really think about what does success look like to you? Now, this seems like a really simple question, and it is a simple question, but simple and easy are two totally separate things. It's not an easy question. Because I'm asking you to stop all the busyness, to get quiet, and to really dial into within yourself. What does success really look like to you? And I would love for you to jot down on your paper. I'm sure you guys are taking notes. And if you're not, great opportunity to do so. And write down for you, to the best that you can right now, what does success look like to you? Because as a small business owner, we get stuck doing the next thing, doing the next thing, doing the next thing, doing the next things. And I've watched businesses, business owners, end up far down this path of what other people would call success and feel empty because they're only looking at one element. They're only looking at the dollars in their bank account or their head count or the other things that external forces might be looking on as success. So I want to ask you, what does success look like to you? Because when you are really thinking through that question, a lot's going to come open to you. And I've watched this heartbreak happen where the pieces of your life no longer match with what you've created. And as a small business owner, we're in such an empowered place to be able to create the life that we want, fueled by our business. And when it's the opposite, when our business dictates how our life looks, we're out of sync, we're out of whack. Things are not quite in balance. Now, a whole concept of work-life balance, man, maybe there, is there really such thing? I don't know. But boundaries, there are. And what does success look like for you? Is your business really helping you get to where you want to grow? And if the answer is yes, great. And if the answer is not yes, it might be a great moment between now and the end of the year to take some time and to reflect on what would you like that to look like? How would you like your life and your business to look differently so that you can be getting closer to your vision of success? Success comes in multiple different forms. It's not just one thing, that bank balance or the head count or what you're doing in your business. It's really based on how you feel and how you perceive yourself to be. So what does success look like to you? There's this awesome Wayne Gretzky quote that I love. It's skate to where, you, where the puck is going to be. It's one of the things that Wayne Gretzky credits his dad with, with teaching him not to skate to where the puck 
used to be, the past, but really to plan where that's going to be. For those of you hockey fans out there, um, it means that we're preparing ourselves for where it is that we want to go. And the reason this is important is when you know what success looks like to you, you can backwards engineer your plan to help you get there. When you just have a blindfold on and are just throwing darts at the dartboard and hoping and praying that something sticks and something works out, you might be stumbling along accidentally winning. You might be stumbling along and accidentally achieving success, but it feels pretty bad on the inside. So I want you to think through what is, what is it that success actually looks like to you? And that will help you make good decisions. Because if you're really truly happy with where your business is, and your goal is to keep your business as it is and to shore it up, then you're going to make very different decisions than the person who really has tons of space and flexibility and they have lots of time that they want to devote to exponentially growing their business. Your investments are going to look different. How you focus your time is going to look different. And what you choose to do inside of your business is going to dramatically change. So consider where you want to go so that you know the best path to get there. As we go through life and as we run our businesses, opportunities show up all of the time, especially if you're plugged into really great educational resources and you're plugged into your different associations and you're plugged into different trade events, sales events, different things that you're going to, opportunity is going to constantly be showing up for you in your business. And that's going to show up in different technology you can invest in and social media and different marketing plans and advertising and maybe even people and, and systems and processes. Oh my, right? All these opportunities. And when you don't have clarity of what you want, you end up in this craziness that looks something like this. You get all these ideas. Let's say you go to a trade show or you go to a, a, a industry event, a sales event, and you get inspired and you get tons and tons of inspirations. This is our little guy holding all the, all the snowballs, right? These are all the possible things you could do. And what most people do who don't have strong goals set, who don't know what success looks like to them, they start doing this. They rush around, they get their pile, and they, they put one snowball and start rolling it, run back to the pile, start rolling another one, roll this one, move to that one, run back to the pile, get another one. And it's exhausting, right? You're, you're running around everywhere doing a little bit of everything. But what's notable about this image, about this funny little cartoon we had created, is that not one single snowball is over the goal line. And our little business owner is sweating and freaking out and feeling exhausted because they've expended all of this energy and they've gotten nowhere. Well, yes, you can say some of the snowballs have gotten bigger, made some progress, but you haven't gotten over that goal line. And when we are looking at ourselves, we are our harshest judge and jury. Harsh, we're harsh with ourselves. And we'll be like, shame on us, we didn't get to our goal. When we focus our effort and our energy and we are aware of the outcome that we want to have, both personally and professionally, we can make decisions better. And when all those doors are open to us, we can spot, we can pinpoint right away the door that is best for us to go through. It jumps off of the page instead of pulling us in a lot of different directions. When we don't have really convincing goals for ourselves, that we feel compelled about, that we are inspired for, when we don't know why we're doing it, right? And we're just doing the next thing, doing the next thing, doing the next thing, without this picture of where we wanna be in mind, we get pulled in a lot of different directions. And we waste all of that energy, all of those steps going back and forth, touching this, running here, doing that. Instead of having extreme focus and really cutting through all the noise in our crazy ADHD world, that believes that multitasking is the answer. Yes, you can do lots of tasks. You can multitask, but you cannot effectively multi-goal. It's not a thing. Having too many doors open prevents you from being able to make good decisions. When you have clarity around what you want to accomplish, it closes doors for you and it makes those choices really, really evident because you will know what your no is and you will know what your yes is. And that is really powerful because this is how it feels. Jumps off the page, clarity. You know right away that this is a yes for me. 
and it makes decision making so easy. And all those beautiful snowballs, all those wonderful inspirations that we receive along the way, we can still save, right? Put them in the freezer for another day. We, there's a great term when I used to be in corporate that we'd use. We'd say, put it in the parking lot. It means we're not throwing it away. We're not wasting it. We're just not doing it right now. It allows you to make really timely decisions inside of your business. And you might say, great, Madeline, this is all well and good, fantastic, but what, is this, what does this practically mean in my business? Who cares, right? Well, the reason that who cares is that we, as small business owners, I'm a small business owner too, we need to acknowledge that our business goals and what we're doing over in our work is not totally alienated from us as a person. And when we wake up on that cold, dreary, wet February day, right, later on in the year and, and things have gone wrong or, or we have angry customers complaining about something or an employee did something crazy and now we're having to deal with the backlash or we get slammed the lawsuit or any number of things which are totally realistic to happen. Just normal, right? It's just normal. Stuff happens in our business and in our life. We lose focus and we start feeling pulled in all these different directions and we forget that little spark of inspiration that leads us to what does success actually look like. So when we get clear around what does success look like for you, then we can start to look at our business more concretely and ask ourselves, how does this apply to our business? I've coached hundreds of small business owners and this question of what does success look like to you, what do you want, is a harder question than you might think. But when you ask yourself and you give yourself space or you work with a coach, or you work with an accountability partner, you have a group of peers who help you come clarity on this, it allows you to be really clear about which doors you should go through and which doors you shouldn't. Because if all the goals are equal and you set up 10 things and they're all equally important and you have three opportunities that are competing with each other, how do you choose? When you have clarity in a single point of focus, it makes this choice so much more natural and it saves you all the back and forth of the wasted energy. So your first step in creating this effective goal setting and taking goals just beyond the dollars in your bank account is to decide what does success really look like to you? And there's no wrong answer here, right? I've worked with, with businesses who are close to retirement, who are looking for the three to five year plan of selling or of passing this down to their kids, or to their grandkids, or to someone else within, within their circle. I've worked with business owners who haven't even broken their first half million, who wanna do that. Or gosh, even those who haven't broken their first hundred grand. I've worked with business owners who have done their first four million, and this year they wanna do five. And success for them looks like they can step away from their business and it not fall apart without them. Maybe success looks like getting your team in place so that you can have more time freedom. Maybe success looks like getting your sales process down pat so you can have predictable results. It's not the what, like getting your sales so that. It's the so that, so that you can have predictable results. Why? So you can feel secure. Why? Keep asking yourself why until you get at the heart of what success looks like to you. So for me, a little personal story, success is so much more than money or status or where my business is. Um, when I first started this business about three years ago, a little over three years ago, I had the vision of growing this to a $15 million business and of being in 15 or 20 different home professional channels. And while that is still something I totally want to do, the reality of my life is very different than when I first dreamt up that dream. When I first dreamt up that dream, I was a corporate executive and I was single and I didn't have any kids and my life looked very differently. Today, I'm a single mom with this beautiful four-year-old son and I was holding on to this dream, this $15 million dream, and I was, I was preventing myself from being able to enjoy where I was in my business, to enjoy making that first million dollar milestone, to enjoy making that first 100 customers served to enjoy making that first 1,000 people impacted because I was so dead set against getting this $15 million vision that really no longer fit with what my business and my life looked like. Because as a small business owner, your life impacts what you're able to do inside of your business. I'm a single mom. 
right? I don't have a spouse and a huge support system or the parent of my, my son involved in his life. He's not. So I needed to make a new vision and ask myself, what is success to me today? Success to me today means I get to take my mornings off to spend time with my son. I work in the afternoons only. Sometimes I work in the mornings, but primarily the afternoons. I run a part-time business. It's pretty damn successful. And I'm proud of that. Is it a $15 million business? No. But who was holding me to that standard other than myself? And my question to you is, are you doing the same? Have your visions of success been dictated to you by something external, which maybe could come from an older version of yourself, a younger version of yourself, previous version of yourself with different life demands, right? Every single person on this webinar has different life demands going on, right? Like I said, some of you might be near retirement. Some of you might be right in the middle of your career. Some of you might be right in the very beginning of it. And that factors in to what we choose to do next year in our business. I was investing countless hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars into the growth of my business because I wanted this $15 million thing. But it was directly at odds with me being an active and involved mom. So I changed what success looked like to me. And now I'm so much more free. And I'm loving my life and I'm loving my business. And this weekend, I got to teach my son how to ice skate. Right? That's my little Noah there on the screen. What's true for you about what a success look like? The next piece around this is once we've sorted this out for ourselves, you might have um, a team. Maybe it's a big team, maybe it's a small team, but being real with your team and letting them know that you're still a person, sharing your story, sharing your inspiration to help your team be inspired. Now, maybe some of what you want is really personal, and they're not going to resonate with helping you get to that personal goal, but maybe they will. Don't underestimate your team, right? My team is all behind me taking my mornings off. They know I do that for my son, and they're all about it. My team loves that I put being an involved parent above wringing every penny out of my business that I possibly can. They're my type of people. They get me. They love working with me. What about you? And then don't underestimate the power of this step for your team. Because when they can define what success looks like and you're active and involved in encouraging that conversation, having that conversation and one-on-one -on -one with them, what does success look like to you? And then helping them and you create their goals for the year and, and drive that into their daily life. You can help pull them out of those difficult moments when they're struggling later on in the year, right? When they're overwhelmed with work and things have fallen off the plate and they lost sight of their goal, bring them back to why are they here? Why are they doing this? What does success look like to them? When you can collaborate on this vision of success that's both personal and professional and bring this together both for yourself and for them and be that catalyst within your team, you will have people who are amped up to help you move your business where you want it to go. If you skip this step, you rip the heart out of your goal setting process. And I sure could sit here and teach you the 12 steps of setting effective goals without this step. But what would happen here is that you wouldn't be able to get the level of commitment from your team that you can get if you don't skip this step. If you don't skip this step. So I would encourage you to do that. Because it's a powerful technique you as a manager, you as a leader can leverage and use to inspire your team and to get them following you through those difficult moments, following you through those trenches when you understand what it is that's meaningful to them. Now, depending on how big your, your business is, how big your team is, you might have to teach your managers how to do this, right? You might need to lead by example and share your story, share your inspiration to your team, your direct reports, your managers report to you, and then have them do this for their team, right? It's never too far down the chain for someone to understand what success looks like to them, what is important in their world, and be able to pull that back into their goals. So when we do this, we're like a magnet. We attract people who are our vibe. 
right? I told you that my team is totally for me taking my mornings off to spend time with my son. He's only going to be little one time. He's in pre-K. Next year he's going to be in school, right? What does that look like to you? When they have, when you have this vision of success for yourself and when you've created a team that's behind you getting there, they're excited for you. It's like a magnet. It helps pull you out of those difficult moments. And without this magnet, you end up in that heartbroken place that I talked about earlier, where you just kind of off, where you're not really getting to where it is that you want to grow. When your team is collaborating with you to create success and they're feeling successful along the way, they're getting where they want to go and you're getting where you want to go and the business is flourishing, that is the kind of trifecta, the triple win, win, win that really creates the catalyst towards success. And it doesn't matter whether that success is related to a number in the bank or to a number of people on your team or to a number of clients served. It's that you and your team are feeling that success every day and you're living successfully. It shifts everything inside of your business. It's a pretty powerful and amazing thing. So that is step one of our goal setting process and that is to decide what does success mean to you and to share that with your team. Next thing that we wanna do um, is to take this one step further by finding a word that really symbolizes that momentum, that joy, that spirit of success. And to make that be your word for the year. When, when I'm setting my word for the year, I really take some time in quiet reflection before I just pick something. And I sit with it and I sleep on it before I share it with anyone. Right? It's my thing that I work with and I, I hold on to. And I think about what is the spirit? What is the feeling? What is the, the emotional charge that I want behind this? Is a sense of calm and steady? Is it a sense of excitement and energy? What do you want to be that watchword that you can put in front of yourself every single day and remember how you want this year experience to be inside your business? And then you can take this practice even further by establishing a word for the quarter or a word for each month. Something really fun that I do in team meetings and, it, and it's amazing. Oftentimes the word doesn't come from me. It comes from someone else inside my team and that's always really, really fun. Then you know that you've got people who get it, right? And with the team that you have, you can create outrageous success. Step number two, um, we're gonna get a little more into the nuts and bolts here about your business. Once you have this culture and feeling about from yourself and from others really dialed in, you want to establish your current business baseline, right? And what that means is that you want to know where you are today. So, of course, yes, we all want more money in our bank account, right? The point of, of running a business is to have impact, but also to make money along the way. So let's talk, talk about this really practically speaking. You've got two factors that play into how much money you personally, as a business owner, and as a business overall, are making. You got your top line, right? And we're talking about your, your financial statement. You got your top line. That means how much revenue, how many sales dollars did you collect this year? Top line. And then you've got your bottom line, which is how much money did you keep, right? How much money did you have left over at the end? And I want to talk with you about setting up these fundamentals, these baseline numbers for both your top line and your bottom line. So top line fundamentals are the things that drive your money your annual sales revenue. These are the direct things that are impacted by your ability to find and to sell to your ideal client. So your lead volume, of course, how many new opportunities are coming into that funnel? That's a major thing for you to know. How many eyeballs are actually getting on your offer on a consistent basis? Your conversion rates, okay? That means how many of your leads those people who said, hey, I think I might be interested in what you're doing, are actually converting into prospects. And the, for, for the majority of my clients, so specialize in home professionals, um, home improvement companies who are totally pros at what they're doing, that means how many people are actually getting appointments with you, primarily in their home, sometimes in your showroom, but mostly how many in-home consultations are resulting from your leads. So how many of those leads are actually turning into prospects, people who you genuinely made the offer to purchase your products? Then 
once you're standing in front of those people, when you're in their homes, how many of those prospects are converting into customers, right? A lot of times people talk about their close rates or their conversion rates, and they totally skip the first two pieces that there's lead volume involved and that you got to get those leads to convince, be convinced to sit for appointments with you, right? That's an art in and of itself, right? We teach that in a whole separate workshop, right? Because it's a totally different thing. You're selling the value of the appointment. Then in the appointment, you're leading your customer through a sales process where they're drawn by emotion to say yes to what you have and they're convinced by logic to stick with that yes. And there's a process involved in that. What are your closing rates? How many leads are you getting in? How many of those leads are turning into prospects? How many of those prospects are turning into customers? And then how much money is each customer spending with you? Right? What's your average sales price? What's your average sales price? If you've got the perfect opportunity, how much money is it likely that they're going to be spending with you? And then certainly the final one, last but not least, often forgotten, what's the client lifetime value of that lead, of that prospect? Which means, is that person a one and done, a one hit wonder, they're going to buy from you once and that's it? Or is there a whole opportunity to get into them more and more frequently that can drive these numbers? Now, the reason I'm going over these numbers with you, they're really basics. I said fundamentals in the top line, top line fundamentals. You should know these things like the back of your hands, but truth bomb, so many customers don't. So many of the small business owners who come to me don't know their numbers. Whether you don't have systems in place or you're not running your numbers or you're not looking at them or you're, they're not reliable, right? That your numbers, you know, you're not in garbage in, garbage out right? You've got to have the right accounting software in place. You've got to have the right CRM in place, client relationship management. You've got to know all of this stuff. You cannot guess, right? I have polled hundreds of small business owners just like you. And here's the thing. Most people are guessing their numbers, right? Hundreds of small businesses across multiple industries, window covering, flooring, paint, landscaping, um, exterior stuff like decks, roofs, People guess their numbers. This is what we did as a poll. How do you ca calculate your close rates exactly? Only 24% of people, that's, that's a small number, 24% of people exactly know their numbers. 40% are approximating, which means they kind of have a feel for it. Then 23% are, are rarely even doing it. They kind of have a feel for it, but they don't even really look at their numbers. And then 13% don't even have a feel and haven't even run their numbers. So in order for you to know where it is you wanna go, you've got to know where you're starting. You have to know these top line fundamentals like the back of your hand so that you can choose how to most impressively impact them. How your goals can drive you to new information at the end of the year. So if you don't have this stuff, you can get it, right? It might take some legwork, might take some blood, sweat and tears on your side, but it is totally worth it because when you have this, you can drive the results behind it. Your bottom line fundamentals. This is what you end up with, right? How much money you keep at the end of the day. Here are the things that really impact that. Your operational costs. What it costs you every day to go into your office and to turn the lights on, to have your marketing in place, your branding, your website, your advertising campaigns. Where are you spending those dollars? Are those dollars resulting in opportunity for you? Your human resources, your people. How much is your payroll? How much does it cost you to deliver on the services that you are promising? How much time and effort and energy in terms of leadership, management, and actual people is happening? And then of course, your purchasing and logistics, making sure that everything is coming together. How much money is it costing you to pay for the products that you then resell to your clients, right? You, you have a vendor, you buy your products from, sometimes you do something to them, sometimes they're fully ready to go and you probably install them or you, you, you make it into the final good, the cost of your goods sold. Looking at these numbers with a fine tooth comb, you can find tons of opportunity. Almost always there's opportunity hiding here. This is one of the place, these bottom line numbers, looking at all your costs, all those lines, inside of your financial statements, inside of your reports at the end of the year, really reviewing this carefully and not taking anything for granted 
you can find some opportunity because growing your bottom line, that, that number at the bottom is about controlling the crop cost of increasing your top line, right? It ever heard the phrase, it takes money to make money, right? You've got to pour into your business. You've got to have a marketing budget. You've got to have people servicing your, your customers. You've got to have all of the systems and tools set up to be able to be effective and efficient in what you're doing. So you have to just be smart about where you're putting those funds so that you can increase that top line and also grow your bottom line. I've watched businesses um, make more money on their top line sales growth and actually make less money in their bottom line for years and years and years and years. And you can't keep doing that. That's not a sustainable business model. If you're making less money, but you're continuing to grow, my question to you is what does success look like? What are you out for? Is that what you really want? And if your answer is yes, great, and you feel really congruent, great. But it's really not smart business to be making top line sales growth and losing on your bottom line, at least not in the long term. Sometimes we can decide to do that for short term growth spurts, but then we need to level off and start making more money inside of our business. These bottom line figures are places where there's lots of sneaky profit leaks, right? Tiny things, you know, the $10 a month, $10 a month, $10 a month, $10 a month, $100 a month, $100 a month. Those things we take for granted and they kind of disappear in the bigger picture. They go into a lump of things. But we need to really do a line by line review. Maybe not every single moment, every single month, but at the end of the year, make sure that you're looking back in the rearview mirror and really asking yourself, are you efficiently spending where you need to to help that top line grow? Or are you just throwing money out? throwing good money after bad. I've had clients who have been doing a marketing campaign, let's say a print campaign that has not produced not one tangible lead and they're starving for leads and they're, they're bleeding out money and they're paying hundreds of dollars per month for this campaign and they just keep doing it because they've always done it. That's not smart business. They don't want you to be doing that. So in this moment of goal setting, this is a great time to clean up your house to make sure that you're really keeping the money that you're making. But word of caution, I don't want you to trip over gold blocks to pick up pennies here, right? We don't wanna throw away the things that are influencing our success that are really helping us get to where we wanna grow, right? To talk about software and tools, you don't wanna cut spending there because you're trying to make more money. That's gonna make you inefficient over the long term. Right? You want to keep in place the things that are really helping you grow. There's another phrase, don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face. So when you're doing this combing through in this review, right before you're setting your goals, this is to get your orientation and know where you're starting and to see where possibility is just right off the bat. Right? That doesn't need to factor into long-term goals. You can make decisions right now, right? But at least gives you all the data so you can look at it from a non-emotional standpoint, just from a nuts and bolts standpoint of is this helping me get to where I want to be or not? Is this really helping? But don't just start slashing expenditures here, there, and everywhere, right? My brother works for a newspaper and they reduced their headcount by 1,500 jobs. And then they hired back half of those people at a higher rate, right? Don't just do things because you think it might be a quick win. Make sure it's really serving your bigger purpose and not cutting off your nose to spike your face. So we want you to establish your business baseline. Know where you stand today because that gives you a really solid starting point to know then for the next step, what do you want next? So the two pieces we have in place is you know what success looks like to you, where you're going, where you want to take this thing from a big picture, from a life standpoint. What kind of life do you want to have so that your business can serve your life? And then you take a look at your business. You do an evaluation. You figure out all of your things that you got going on from top line, from bottom line, and everywhere in between. And then you can start. You can decide where you want to go next. And that's our third step. Imagine all of your different options for the year. This, again, is a step that a lot of people miss. They go from right from where I am to where do I want to go. And they set that in stone right away. Well, have a little bit of fun. Right? What's business if we're not having some fun now and then? I want you to play, to have some fun with your numbers. It's fun to like, what would happen if we, if we did this or if we did that? Enjoy the energy of the possibility and involve other people in this discussion. If you've got managers, if you've got business partners, if you have people that play a significant role in your business, let them play with you. 
right? It's fun when you do it together. It's so much more powerful when you do this within community or in a group or with your, or your peers, at least with someone other than just you and your pencil. You and your pencil can be super fun or you and your Excel spreadsheet can be really fun anyways, but play a little bit, okay? Ask yourself the question, what do we need to get to where we want to grow? If growth is what you want. If your goal is to be sustainable and to stay where you are, but to have a better customer experience, what do we need to create that better customer experience? And then just allow yourself to think through the different pieces of your business. Do you need more people? Do you have opportunity coming out your ears, but your team isn't big enough? Maybe your sales team, maybe your installation team, maybe your crews, maybe it's your admin. Do you need more people to get there? Do you need more at-bats, right? Do you need more opportunities? Do you need more leads, better lead management? When you looked at all those numbers and you saw how many leads were coming in and then how many appointments were hitting the books, do you need some training? Do you need some better stabilization of where you are in order to make sure that you're really getting effectively to where it is that you want to go? You can start digging in on some of your close rate numbers, right? Look at those appointments. How many of those appointments are converting into sales? If you're under 30%, hmm, there's probably a lot of opportunity for you. 30 to 45%, pretty darn stable. That's good numbers. Then we get into the green zone where you're really making money. 45 to 65%, 65 to 75, 75 or over. Jump into these higher close, close rates is all about working your sales process, right? I've worked with lots of million dollar closers, people who on their own close a million dollars of sales with average sales price anywhere from 12, maybe 2,500 to 4,500. You know, that's a shitload of sales they're doing if they're closing a million bucks on their own. They're working a sales process. Is your sales process working for you? Could you teach it to other people? Could you expand your team if it got better? But these are just things to play with, questions to ask yourself so that you get the idea of like all of the possibilities that are available to you. Here's how you can play with your numbers, right? If you got a $3,000 average sales price, you're going out on 20 appointments, starting at the bottom, 25% close rate. Five of those appointments are turning into to money. 15 of those appointments aren't, right? Then you increase your close rate to 30%. Now we, we're rolling up higher and higher and higher. It means with the exact same amount of opportunity, if you are focused on this, look how much more money you can make in your business, right? Look how much more money you can make in your business with the same opportunities as what you currently have in your hands. So once we do that, we play, then it's time to stop playing and to make some decisions, right? We've already decided on what success looks like. We've established our baseline. We've had a little bit of fun. Now step four is to set your focus point to really establish your goal. The question to ask yourself here is if December 18th, 2019, you are looking back on your year and you are asking yourself, have I won? Have I succeeded? What would you want to see? What would stack up for a yes to you on that question? Or even better way to say it, if December 18th, 2019, you're looking back on your year, what is going to make you pop that bottle of champagne and say, hell yeah, I did it. Woo! Right? What is it? What is it? What do you want out of your business? And here's the truth, guys. It's your business. You can have what you want. Now, it might take you, if you want, you know, for instance, my vision of the 15 million, it's going to take me more than three years to get there, especially as a single mom with a lot of stuff going on in my life. So realistically, I've shelved that and I have a different vision of what success looks like. And quite frankly, I am popping champagne. I am happy. I feel awesome. I'm so glad that I reset what success looked like to me and I recalibrated my goals to suit that what does success look like to me. So this is the moment that you set your goals, right? And by that, you have tons of different places you could move, okay? And I have clients who will set goals in every single different aspect. They want to increase their productivity. They want to increase their average sales price. They want to increase all these different areas, their lead rate, their close rate, their business partners. They're going to take a vacation. They're going to do that. Those are like the, ma the micro goals. All the little tiny things are going to set up to the one big thing. 
Because remember what we talked about before, that focus. We want the options to jump off the page to you whenever you're faced with multiple different good things. Which one is the most excellent of all the good things? How do you know which door to open? It's by really picking the one thing that's going to most move the needle for you. So here's an example. So let's say that you want to increase. So you're always going to have a number financial goal. You want to increase your revenue to X amount or you want to stabilize your revenue right where it is. You want to keep your business where it is, but you want to improve your customer experience. Let's just say you know that you could really improve your customer experience, and that is your goal for the end of the year. And your proof of that goal is going to be like 100 five-star reviews or ratings with rave reviews. That's going to be your proof to yourself that you've really wowed this customer experience. When you set what you want, your goal is to have a revenue. You're always going to have to have some sort of financial goals, right? That's your yardstick to know how things are going. But in service of that, you're going to have something else. This, for instance, improve my customer experience. Or for instance, grow my team because it's the team that's going to help me get to where it is I want to go from a financial standpoint, from a client standpoint. Maybe it's going to be improve your systems and your processes, have better flow within your business. Get in control of those business fundamentals. You can really drive that top line and that bottom line and know where you stand. These are big picture things, but they're the things that let you decide on the smaller ones. If you know that customer experience is your thing for 2019, then you can decide when you have an opportunity, let's say, to add a new tool in. Is this going to be a yes for customer experience or a no? Let's say that you have an opportunity to bring in a person. Is this person, this role, this increasing this functionality going to improve customer experience? Yes or no? Right? Let's say you have the opportunity to do a new ad campaign. Is this new advertising going to help improve customer experience? Yes or no? Do you see how that helps you? When you create your overarching goal, your big picture, what you want to accomplish in your business, then your little smaller milestones the little thing that you're going to check off as success allow you to, those decisions are easier to make because you're weighting it against something. Okay. Any questions around that? Definitely use the Zoom, use the chat box. Happy to answer what questions you have as we go. Still have more time here together. So I just want to make sure checking in. What questions do you have? Is this helping you? Is this sparking some ideas about how you can address goals in your business differently? how you can look at your business differently so that you can really accomplish what it is you want to do. The coolest piece around looking at goals this way is that you have all the data in front of you. And when you set that, you can then look at your data points and say, okay, well, in terms of customer experience, I'm spending a lot of money over here, but it's really not even touching my results. So I can address that and maybe make, keep that money or reinvest that money into different places in my business. So those are some of, the, some of the steps. When you focus on one thing that has the greatest potential to get you where you want to grow, this is how it feels. This is how it feels. Right? So Kate says she likes refilling your success as not just being about revenue, not just being about dollars. Right? Isn't that liberating? Isn't it nice to know that as the owner of your business, you get to decide that? Right? It's totally different when you don't own your own business. It's not the same at all. And that's why it's really important for you to help involve your team in this process too, because you want them to catch this joy so that they're willing to do the hard work to stay the course when the going gets tough. When you have one thing that you're really pursuing and you're figuring out how does that ripple effect into all the different areas of my business, it's not easy, right? It's a tough question to ask yourself. But when you really stick with that, it's so powerful and it can really move mountains for you. This is a great Bill Gates quote. People overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. So, so many people set up these huge, I'm going to grow by 50% in my business this year. And for some of you on the line, maybe that could be a possibility. Happy to discuss it with you if you'd like. But for most of us, that's not really that plausible. We want our goals to be rooted in reality, 
It's why we looked at those business fundamentals. And then we wanted to be pushed towards inspiration. It's why we played with all the numbers. It needs to be a good balance of feeling like, oh, there's a little bit stretching outside of my comfort zone, but I'm convinced, I know rock solid, we can do this. When you don't believe in your own goal, there's no way you can get your team to do it. And of course, you can have your BHAGs, your big, hairy, audacious goal, which like, this is what we're going to do, but in a perfect world, I love to do this. You totally can do that. You can have your stretch goals. Some people call them a moonshot. That thing that like, wow, wouldn't that be nice if. But that shouldn't be how you run your day-to-day -day business. You need to have solid, achievable goals that are not, like I said, not just dialing them in, really giving you the opportunity to push yourself forward, really giving yourself that opportunity. Because without that opportunity to push yourself forward and to stay rooted in reality, it's going to feel a little bit like you're flailing around. And that's a very difficult place to be. So last step, final step here. You want to ripple your goal, your word, your single point of focus in all the different departments of your business. Now, for those of you on the line who might have a small business, maybe you have a three-man three -man band. Maybe you're the chief cook and bottle washer of your own business. One of my clients called himself that. I loved it. Maybe you have a five-person business. Maybe you have a 15-person business. Maybe you have a 20-person business. You need to be disciplined in this step about looking at the different functions, even if it's a group of three people, even if it's just you, what are the different departments within your business? Sales, marketing, finance, HR. What are those different things? And ask yourself the question about how am I gonna take this one single point of focus? How am I gonna take this one word and apply it here? How am I gonna take this customer experience and apply it to my HR, to my hiring practices? How am I going to take customer experience and apply that to sales? How am I gonna take customer experience and apply that to marketing? When you do this, opportunities will surface for you. Cool stuff will happen. When we are so established in what we want and we can live it and feel it and taste it, when we can sit at our desk and hear our people in our mind's eye saying like, wow, this was the best year ever. When we can see our customers high-fiving us, feel them high-fiving us in our mind about like, that was the best experience I've ever had with any small business. When you can sense the way it's gonna feel you walking into your business when you've accomplished this goal, when it's that real for you, when you've done that and you've involved your whole senses, your sight, your hearing, how it's going to feel, how it's going to smell in your office when, when it's all perfectly clean and shining and you're loving it. When you've involved yourself in this future vision of what you want, the universe is going to conspire to support you. What that means is opportunity is going to show up in the direction you want to go. And because you're clear, you're going to be able to spot that red door from all the other doors. And it gets easier and easier and easier. Someone's asking, does building business partnerships make sense for a focus point? Yes, right? Depending on your actual and individual business, yes. Your focus point could be all hands on deck for business partnerships. It's one of the major things that we do in my business are partnerships, right? Partnerships are huge for us because it ultimately is a major revenue driver. It increases our audience. Right? It does all the things that we want it to do. When you set your single point of focus, when you set that major goal, make sure you ask yourself, okay, why? Why would I want business partnerships? What is it going to serve for me? What's it helping me do? Is it helping me grow my customers? Is it helping me become more stable? Is it helping me expand my, expand my baseline so that, that stability is more a real thing? Is it helping me increase my revenue, decrease my costs? And if it checks off a lot of those boxes, then heck yes, set that. That'd be a great one for you, I think. If that's the Debbie I think it is, I think that'd be a great one for you, okay? You need to push those dominoes. You are the puppeteer. You are the domino builder and pusher, right? You need to push those dominoes and say, how does this apply, right? If building partnerships is my word for the year, is my watch word, then, yeah, it is you, hey Debbie, then, you can say, does this marketing campaign make sense in light of that goal? Does this hire make sense in light of that goal? 
Does this expenditure make sense in light of that goal? And if the answer is yes, then you have your decision. Doing your business in this way is a little bit out of the box, right? It might not be the nuts and bolts, roll up your sleeves and look at, look at every single thing the same way that everyone else does, way of, of going about goal setting. But what this allows you to do is to set yourself up for quicker, easier, faster decision making. It changes the way you look at your business from the seat of the business owner from the seat of the one driving the choices. Your choices impact your team. Your choices impact what everyone else is gonna be willing to do or not do to achieve what it is that you say you're gonna achieve. And if you wanna take this one step further to the people, when you can tie that single point of focus to a bonus plan, to helping them make more money, to helping them move towards their goals, gosh, you have got gold in your hands, right? That's like printing money when you can get your team that much behind what it is that you want to accomplish inside of your business. And it's really lets you take that leap. See where you are today and really leap towards where you want to be in the future. Really leap towards something exciting and motivating and glorious in 2019. There's nothing holding you back from being able to get to where you want to grow. And if you need support and help in getting there, respond to the email that I sent you, right? Reminding you about this webinar. Respond to that email and set up a complimentary consultation with me. I'd be more than happy to talk about the concrete nuts and bolts in your business with you to see if this, what you need and what you need to get there and whether or not making different investments in training or support or coaching is really what you need to move yourself to that next level. And if you've got it, if this helped you, great. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm happy for you, right? I'm cheering for you. I'm always the biggest cheerleader of the people who invest themse in themselves, right? You sitting on this webinar right now, listening to what I'm saying, taking notes, capturing down those moments that are really exciting for you, is you investing time in you and learning how to be a business owner, a better business owner, learning how to be a better leader, right? Have you ever watched those leaders from afar whose team would do anything for them? What I've taught you today is at the heart and soul of that. Tapping into human motivation, tapping into your own motivation, knowing what you want, boldly and fiercely going after it in your business and in your personal life. And it's such a beautiful piece about becoming all that you're meant to be. So that's what I had for you today, this message of inspiration and of business best practice, right? We spent 60 minutes today, today together. We spent some time on some fundamentals, really dug into some of the motivations. And there's so much more that you can do in terms of setting goals and establishing what you want inside of your business, really looking at all those details, right? There are weekend workshops devoted to business planning where you're going to look at every single line, every single department, every single piece of it, right? I don't offer that. Other companies do. Happy to send a referral. But there is that those resources are out there for you. When you start here with the motivation, and then what are you going to accomplish? And then what is your single point of focus so you can consistently get there? You're going to be able to move mountains unlike anything else. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, pop them into my chat box. I'm right here with you live. If you enjoyed our content today, I would love to hear like a yes or what you loved the most. Um, and all of my coaching calls, I always do this celebrating your ahas, your what was awesome, what did you love the most? Because sometimes in you sharing what you liked the most out of the presentation, someone else will hear something brand new that maybe they didn't catch the first time I said it. So thank you so much for investing in yourself today. Thank you for so much for being here on this webinar. If you want some more direct support from me, simply respond to the email where this was sent and I'll be more than happy to book a complimentary consultation with you and to talk about your business. So really excited to see all of you again on some future webinars. Stay tuned in your inbox and you'll be seeing a copy of this presentation. We'll actually send you the recording. So you'll see a copy of this presentation popping in your inbox as well. Don't hesitate to share it. I love for people to share it. Invite other people to listen to if you loved it. And I will really look forward to seeing all of you on another one of my presentations, my upcoming webinars. Got a lot of cool stuff planned for 2019. So stay tuned and look forward to it. So thank you so much. And I'll talk to you again soon.
Bye for now.